Hey guys, this is Jason with Caltech Engineering. We're going to do a 3D scanner kit assembly video. So, first what you're going to do, open your box up, take all the goodies out. We're going to have all of our acrylic pieces, a few smaller interior boxes. And I've gone ahead and peeled the backing from most of the pieces. You're going to have to do that yourself. We put the backing on to protect it from Mars and, and uh, unattractive marks. Pull out your cardboard piece. Underneath your cardboard will be some documentation and some other more flat objects from the box. The tools that I like to have on hand um, we include the Allen wrench for you with the ball end, so it gives you some nice angular access. The only, the only tools you have to have are a small flathead screwdriver and a small Phillips head screwdriver to remove the screw from the camera and to tighten the electronics down on the shield. Tools I like to have but are not necessary is a small pair of pliers, needle nose pliers, and a pair of electrical pliers to help trim down the uh, insulation on the wires. Uh, I also enjoy this screwdriver. Uh, we use a lot of M3s here. Um, so I have this screwdriver with a 2.5 millimeter hex head on it. That's also very useful. But the only things you have to have are these three, and this is included. I've taken the liberty of peeling most of them, but basically they're just a um, masking paper, just pretty simple. I'm going to take my three boxes and put them out of the way for right now. They're not all labeled in this video, but the third one will be labeled. That's the hardware, the stepper motor, and the power supply. First step, I'm going to take the top T and the bottom T and set them out, as well as my three wire clips. My wire clips are going to snap down into these slots in the bottom T. Now it's going to be probably might be a pretty tight fit. Just have to press her in there. They're going to all want to face the same side. Doesn't matter which side for right now, but it will matter later. Okay, push those in. Now we're going to take the top T and we're going to stick it on there. Now before you stick it on there, ensure that they're all on the correct side because these can fit very tight. Uh, and once they come on, sometimes they don't come off. This one doesn't seem to have that problem. Fits on very, very nicely. Perfect snug fit. And there we have our assembled T. Once you have your T assembled, you're going to reach into the third box that's going to be labeled power supply, hardware, and stepper motor. And we'll just pull out our hardware bags and our Allen wrench. So, put that off the side. We have all our M3 bolts. We have 30 millimeter, 16 millimeter, 8 millimeter, 10 millimeter, and some nuts and standoffs. Push them off for right now. We're going to grab our motor base. And the motor base is going to fasten to the T with three 16 millimeter bolts. So I'll pull out a few of these. And we did include an extra one or two of all the bolts, so in case you lose one. I'm going to insert these in the back of the part. Got a nice press fit in there. Now I'm going to take out three nuts. And you want to, this is where orientation is important. You can see there's a small square where the wires come out of from your stepper motor on this side of the part. You want to make sure that, you can see down here, you want to make sure that your wire holders are on the same side as that square. So this is going to be the proper orientation of this part. Now, it can take a little, can be a little hard to hold these in here, um, but if you set that first one in there, it should rest and then you just have to use your fingers to hold the other two in. And they should slip in reasonably, reasonably well. So I've got them held in 
and I'm just going to slowly wiggle them on there. It should press in, you should be able to just barely see the tips of the T-slots. Now I'm just going to stick my Allen wrench in there and tighten up those nuts. Don't over tighten. Uh, acrylic can be fairly brittle and there's no need for things to be very tight. There's no fast moving parts or anything like that on this project. So um, just snug is going to be it's going to be plenty. Once I have these firmed up, I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other side with the camera base. Uh, the only difference is we're going to put in one 16 millimeter in the bottom and two 30 millimeters coming from the top in these two holes. So 30, 30, and 16. So now that we have both ends assembled on our T, that part's good to go. We're going to grab our motor and we're going to grab our gear. Uh, this gear doesn't match, I know. All I have is a red gear sitting around, so it's going to have to do. Um, and we're going to insert a nut into that little to that little hole. And you don't need a pair of pliers, but I find a pair of pliers helpful in inserting uh, a pair of fine needle nose pliers, inserting these nuts. So we're just going to drop him down in there. So we're going to put an M3 by 8 bolt in here. Simply screw it in. Um, don't screw it in all the way. And then we're going to find on the motor shaft. There's a flat. There's a flat spot on the motor shaft. So we want that bolt to line up with that flat spot on the motor shaft. And you can just go ahead and insert that all the way on the motor shaft. And then we're going to take our Allen wrench and just tighten it up. Make sure that it stays parallel directly on top of that flat shaft because that's what locks this gear in place so your platform doesn't slip. Um, I'll just give that an extra little, extra little snug up there. So now that our motor is assembled, we're going to thread the wires first because there's not a lot of clearance. So go ahead and you can see, you might not be able to see, but there's a small, small square slot. Thread the tip of the motor cable through that small square slot and then successively through each of the slots in the wire holders. Now the wire's in there, we're going to pull the wire through and insert our stepper motor into the cavity. It can be fairly tight, so you have to watch. Just make sure you just have to wiggle it in a little bit, especially with those wires. Make sure those wires get pushed all the way in. There we go. Pull through stuff. Okay, now our motor is sitting inside. Now we're going to take find our bag of M3x10s. We're going to take out four of these. Four. Set them down. And we are going to thread our motor. There are small screw holes in the motor that are threaded. We're going to insert these bolts. Um, I have a screwdriver with a hex head on it that is, I prefer to use that over the Allen wrench. If you have it, um, I would recommend using it. But if not, the Allen wrench will be just fine. It might just take a little bit longer. I like to run each of the uh, I like to run a bolt through each of my 3D printed holes just to knock out the debris. Um, make sure they set they set down snugly on the motor. Um, in all the holes, in all the parts actually, it helps a lot to, to uh, set them down first. Clear out the holes. Okay, now we're gonna, we've got all those snugged up. We're going to move on to the other end. Just going to pull this pull this cord through and then kind of tuck it out of our way for now. We'll need it. We'll need it later. Now find the face plate. Should have two small magnets embedded in it. Shouldn't matter which way you stick it in. Make sure it just fits smoothly in that slot. It should. We're going to insert a couple of M3 by 16s up from the bottom. So there should be one extra 16 left over in case you lose one. But drop those in. It can be kind of hard to. They can be kind of a challenge to get in there. 
time as you drop them from the top. And drop them from the top as you guide them with a pair of pliers. Same here, drop it from the top and guide it with a pair of pliers. Okay, they're both in there now. Hopefully they don't fall out when we tip it over. I'm going to leave this tipped about halfway like that. We'll grab two more nuts and insert them in the face plate. One nut. I just hold them on the back side with my fingers to keep them from falling out. And then once you tilt them sideways, uh, they shouldn't fall out if you're careful. I'm going to insert that to that slot. This snugs in firmly. Go in with the Allen wrench. Snug those up. Again, it's acrylic, so don't go too tight. These aren't weight bearing. Uh, there's no reason that they should come loose. And if they do, the scanner should stay together anyway. For the most part. Okay, those are snugged up. There we have our faceplate, cleanly mounted. Now we're going to take our frosted acrylic. You can see it's smooth on one side and frosted on the other. Um, we usually put the frosted side to the front, but it doesn't really matter find two and three by tens. Stick them through. Through. And then I'm just going to slip that through the holes. Should fit on very cleanly. Take two nuts. Thread those on. I don't even use an Allen wrench or, or pliers or anything to hold this nut. Just finger snug should be adequate. We're going to continue building our frame before we get to the electronics. For now we're done with this. I'm going to set it off to the side. So now we're going to take our laser holders and our laser holder cores and we're going to prepare them. Um, first step, we're going to take our laser arms. The fat end of the laser arm goes into the camera base, like so. So we won't do anything with that end. We're going to put a nut in this end. If they don't go in one way, flip them over. They'll go in better the other way. And we're going to take a couple m 3 by 10s Sitting out, one there. And we are going to insert them in that hole on the top side here. So just push them in there and it can be kind of annoying to get threaded, but get in there. Good, now she's in. Now take this, insert it in there, stick in my Allen wrench, snug things up. Do the same thing on the other side. Then we can take a nut and insert it in the top right there. And we're going to take an M3 by 8. We're going to need four of these M3 by 8s. You're going to have one left over when we're done with this. And we're just going to thread that lightly. Don't don't need you do not need to tighten it down yet. Um, that just secures the position of the laser core. The laser core is going to be the same thing. We're going to stick a nut down in there, and it can kind of be hard to get weaseled in there. The back of your Allen wrench can be just right. And then we're going to stick an M3 by eight in there as well. Same thing. Don't tighten it down. Just snug it up. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, now you take the core and insert it into the holder. Direction doesn't matter. Push that in there snugly, like so. Symmetrical. 
Um, now I've taken the liberty of assembling this side already, uh, and I'll show you how I do it on the other side. The, as I said, they are symmetrical. The only thing you have to make sure of is that you are pointing up, that this points up, as opposed to that's the bottom. So this is upside down. That is correct, the part geometry here. So what we're going to do first, we're going to take a M3 by 10. And these, these bolts are the hardest to get in of any on the project. Put, stick them on the tip um, of your Allen wrench. And slide, it's a diagonal hole. They'll slide through that hole and insert them, bam, in there. You can see the bolt has made its way in. I'll pull my Allen wrench out, find a nut for the front here, hold that nut in, and then press my part in. Feels a little tight for some reason. There we go. So that's just out of line. And then we will push in my bolt, snug it up with a screwdriver, with the Allen wrench, my bad. Snug it up. And now we will take our whole machine. And this is going to be set on top to 10 millimeter bolts we put in here, nuts we put in here, and that's going to be set on the top. And then your circuit board will be put on the back. For filming purposes, because it's going to be hard to look at, um, I'm going to hold off on putting this top on, and we're going to address the electronics kit. So we'll put them off to the side. And we will open up one of our goodie boxes. This is the USB driver, custom shields, packaged along with the lasers and the LED, and Uno clone, and a bearing, which we can put aside for now. Now we'll just have to open all these up. Open our Arduino. It falls out. Some lovely extra headers were included, a kind of them. Throw that away. We will remove the lasers, the LED, and the custom shield. This is the driver. So you're going to want to take this, it comes with a small little heat sink with a little adhesive back on it. You can see the 3 from the 3M. Peel back the adhesive, but not the whole. You can see there's, there's a sticky on there, and you can test it with your finger. It's pretty sticky. And you can see the small, the black integrated circuit in the center. That's where we're trying to put this on. Just try to stick that in the center of that black chip. But make sure that it doesn't over, doesn't cover that potentiometer there, because we will have to adjust that later. So press that on and firm him up. It'll be kind of wiggly, but it'll get better with time. We're going to bring back our face plate. I took the liberty of removing the front plate from the scanner uh, just to make it a little easier to see uh, from you guys from the video on the electronics assembly. First thing we're going to do is take the LED, peel off the backing, and we're going to want to stick that so it let rests just above the cow horns. Just, you can see, where the tips of those horns are, and I'm going to try to center it on between those two nuts, which is going to be just about perfect. Good. So, that's on there perfectly. Just press it firmly to center it down. Okay, so that's on. Now we're going to take two M3x10s. That bag's finally getting close to empty. We've used up all of our 8s and 16s and our 30s, so these are all we have left. We're going to stick in two from the front, hold them in with your fingers, and then grab the standoffs, which should be in the nut bag, and twist those standoffs on. Now these threads can easily 
they seem to not mesh well with metal threads sometimes. Sometimes they're great, like that one screws right on. This one is appearing like it might not like us. It's easy to get there. It's easy to get cross-threaded on. There we go. It's done. Now we're going to take our Arduino and we're just going to set him on top of those. Grab two nuts and we're going to twist these nuts on. Again, all these are just hand tight. There's no need to get really aggressive with them. If you have a wrench and really want to use it, uh, you can. Now we're going to take our shield. Everything looks good on our shield. It, uh, and you want to line it up the top. These appear to be slightly out of line, so we're going to straighten them up a little bit. We want to line up the top of the Arduino with the top of the shield. Uh, you can see down on, on this, there are a couple empty pins. We don't want it to line up like that. We want to line up properly where that space matches up with that space. Make sure all the pins are in and just Firmly press that down. Make sure everything is inserted. There you go. Looks good. Now the last thing we're going to do is to take our chip and put it on there. Now the chip orientation is very important. Uh, it says right on here, A4988 driver ensure proper orientation exclamation point. And it also says do not insert A4988 driver if there's power to shield. So there's no power to shield right now. If you ever do want to remove this driver or mess with it, always do it when the machine is unplugged. This cap lays down and slides, it covers up that silk screen, but you can see it says pot and it has an image there. So you want to match those two images up and the chip is in the center. So that is the correct and that's going to be the proper orientation. Now we're going to take our lasers and we're going to have to put our the cap on the machine here. So we're going to set this we're just going to set it on there for now. I'll bolt it on later. It'll set on snugly. You're going to want to take your lasers, thread them through the back, and then press them in. Depending on your printer, they may they may press, they may push up the sticker. Uh, they do various things, but as long as it's a firm, nice firm fit should be good. We found that in many cases we don't even need, you can see that peels the sticker back a little bit. Um, so, you know, if you're worried about aesthetics, you could push your laser back through, remove your sticker, and then insert it again and hold it in place. The glue from the sticker helps hold it in place, but that's what this nut is for. So you can firm that bolt down to hold that laser in. That'll hold that laser in place. So we usually just center the we center the laser, uh, you know. Doesn't really matter where you put that. Just to, just keep it similar on the other side. We're doing the same thing over here. I'm gonna peel our laser sticker off first. Now these wires, you can see a tiny hole behind this laser arm. We're gonna insert those wires into that little hole. They'll come through the center here. And then down. Same thing over here. Wires into small hole and down. We just firm those up and they stay out of the way reasonably well. Now in terms of hooking up the machine, either you can see that there are silk screens on here. The LDR ground and LDR1 sensors. We're not going to use that block. What we do want to use first is for the LED, we have LED positive and ground. So we're going to take a small flat screwdriver and open these up. Looks like these are already opened up for me. The white wire is going to be your positive wire. So that's going to go into the LED plus terminal. And the gray wire is your negative wire. And that's going to go into the ground terminal. Now. There's not a lot to clamp on these, so I'm going to take my electrical pliers and just peel back a bit of the insulation. That should give me a little more room to work with. Now I'm going to take my 
small flat screwdriver. I'm actually going to use a little bit smaller one. Okay, this should be small enough. There's a thunderstorm going on outside. You can probably hear it in the video. Just open those up. Insert the ground. And tighten it down. Same thing, open it up. And then tighten it down. So that is done. I want those to rest out of the way in the future. Now you're going to take your lasers. And I'm going to do the same thing with these wires. I'm just going to open them up a little bit to give us a little more room to clamp to. So you can take these two wires, the two grounds, which are the blacks, and just twist them together. Make sure they've got a nice twist on them. And insert them into the ground terminal, ensuring that the terminal makes contact with both wires. Snug that up. Now we're going to take this laser, stick it in the right laser terminal, take our left laser, stick that in the left laser terminal, and make sure all the connections are snug and nothing's going to fall out. Make sure you have a good connection. Now we'll take our base, and I, I took the faceplate off of the base for ease of viewing from above, uh, and then I'm going to anchor it down now. You can either do that, or you can leave this anchored in, and then attach all of your electronics with the machine, excuse me, with a machine resting like this. That one's up, that part is up to you. Now we have our motor cord, which you've tucked out of the way up till now. We're going to thread it up through the back of the machine, and we're going to stick it on that header right there. You can see lightly silk screen says blue, that side says black. So these wires are not in the correct order, but we're going to put blue. We're going to match up the ones that we can, and we're going to match up blue. And just snug that on there. Should slide on all the way up, like there. Perfect. Now we're going to get to the goodies here. Camera and USB cable, our final goodie box. Open him up. Yeah. Both of these. Here's our USB cam cable. Pretty straightforward, but with a twist. It has to be a right angle cable to fit underneath the machine. And stick it into the port on the USB. You can see it is right, right there. I'm going to stick it in there. That fits in perfectly. And that will go to our computer eventually. Now we take our camera, peel it out of its bag. And this takes a little bit of further assembly, disassembly, I should say. Untwist our twist tie. Get our wires. Now this faceplate, there's a little bit of a little notch there. Gonna grab that, pop it off. We don't need it. We also don't need this, this whole thing in the back. Now there's a little rubber, little rubber gasket right there. Just reach in with your screwdriver and pop him out. It should take. Oh, that was the wrong one. There we go. That's the rubber gasket you want to take out. So reach in the top, pop that gasket out. You might not be able to see, but we have a small Phillips head screwdriver slot. Once we have that gasket poked out, we're going to get a screwdriver, the smallest Phillips you can find, and just twist out that little tiny screw. You can see that little guy's miniature. You can throw him away. We don't need him. He holds in a little bar. Now just stick your screwdriver in. And that bar just presses out. You can see it's pressing out from the top. It falls out. And that's it. So now we take our camera and we thread the cord down through the top. Out the bottom. And we're just going to push that over to the edge a little bit. And our camera should fit very nicely in front of the firm press fit. And there's our camera mounting. And you can stick your cord 
down and out through the bottom on the same side as the USB. If you want to, you can take it out somewhere else if you'd like. Through. Okay, now we're going to set this aside for the moment. And we're going to pick up the bearing holder and the platform. <clears throat> now the platform will have masking tape on it, or masking paper, but we pulled that off in step one. And we're going to look for some more M3x10s. Now these are going to be self-tapping holes, so they're going to twist pretty tight. But they might just drop in from one side and self-tap from the other. So you're going to want to find which side is which. So they drop in from this side and they get tight part way through. So this is the side we want to work on. We're going to take our printed part, stick our four bolts in it, find our Allen wrench, and we're going to find their, find their homes and settle them into them. And then we're just going to start them all. And you may have to apply a little, because they're self-tapping, you're going to have to apply a little bit of pressure to start. So I'm just putting some light down with pressure, and you can feel it'll start to get tight. It'll start to tighten up. Like that, one's, that one's pretty firm. It's tightening up. There we go. Let's settle into its hole. Getting pretty firm as well. Now, if you want to, that is that's totally solid. But if you want to crank on them a little bit more, you can hold the wrench the other way, a little more torque on it. And there we go. We don't want those to stick through too far, so we've threaded them through plenty. Now we're going to take our foam foam cover, has an adhesive back on it. We're going to peel that adhesive, and it sticks pretty well. So you're going to want to try to line this up accurately. You're not going to get not going to get more than one shot at this. Put those. You want to line up your two holes with your holes. That's going to be your most important thing. And then the rest of the bed, see I was slightly off, but that's going to have to do. And just press everything down. And that'll cover up those holes that, the bolts that maybe you put them a little bit too far through from the back. That'll cover that up. Now we're going to flip this over again. I'm going to take this bearing and it should just press right in there. If it doesn't press, if your parts are slightly too large or slightly too small, if they're too small, you're going to have to do some filing or sanding. If they're a little bit too large, just dab a little bit of glue around the edges. And that should hold the bearing in place. Put that off to the side. Now you want to take your back cover and your two M8 nuts, the big ones, and you're just going to slip these nuts into the pocket on the side of the cover. Just like so. Now you can bring up your scanner. We're going to set the turntable on should be a nice snug press fit, press on nicely. Now the only thing you have to check is you have to make sure that you're lined up with your gear. As you can see, the gear fits in that little pattern there. So if it doesn't line up with the gear, it won't set down right. You can kind of feel. Now we're gonna bring up our scanner and we're just gonna set our plate down on this rim. Should press fit. Now the only thing you wanna take a look at, you wanna make sure that your gear lines up with the corners that it attaches to here. If it presses down all the way, it should be lined up. So there we have our beautiful turntable. Finally, after you put on the turntable, we're going to take our power supply, which I've unraveled, and you're going to thread him up to the bottom with the other cords. Now, it's very important that the power supply goes in this jack in the shield as opposed to the jack in the Arduino. There won't be enough power to the unit, and it may fry the Arduino if you put it in the Arduino jack. So, I'm going to insert him in there. You got your three cords coming out. Slap my back plate back on. Now, what you're going to have left over, of course, you're going to have your Allen wrench. You should have at least one of every screw left over, so you have a little bit of room to lose, uh, except for the M3, AM 3x30s. And you should have about three extra small nuts as well. Um, you'll have those and if you don't screw up your sticker application you'll have one extra platform sticker left over as well along with the parts from the Logitech webcam and your trash. Plugged it in you can see I've got the Caltech glowing steer head symbol, spinning platform, lasers that rotate in their slots so you can position them any point you want on the bed and that's it. Thanks so much to all the Kickstarter backers. We certainly couldn't have done it without you, and we can't wait for you to get your scanners and get some scans out, get them into the world.